I really like making drinking glasses. They're one of my favorite things because you mm -hmm. can use them, covet them, wash them, mm -hmm. enjoy them, you know, yeah. they're so personal. Hi everyone, welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully and today I'm here in the studio with Janet Zug, who is a glass blower right here in our hometown of Tunbridge. Janet, thanks for having me over to your beautiful space. Well, thank you for coming. Of course. <laughs> um, so I've been wanting to inter interview Janet for a while. She's one of the very first maker types that I met when Rick and I moved up here uh, almost, what, 13, 14 years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and Janet makes beautiful glassware. And we'll, we'll show you some more examples and also show her <laughs> in action. Um, but here's one example of of things she makes. So um, I always like to n find out people's sort of origin story and you know I think a lot of these hobbies could just stay hobbies but then it's interesting to me what makes people tick over and say oh I'm going to do this for professionally. Mm -hmm. So how did you first discover glass blowing, and how did you make that decision to say yeah I'm going to take this on as a full-time thing? Well, so I got a job mm -hmm. as an apprentice. I got I found an ad in the newspaper looking for a glass blowing apprentice no experience necessary. Oh, okay. So I went for the interview with Simon Pierce mm -hmm. and got the job. Um, and it was about my fifth day. It was the Friday after I started working there that mm -hmm. I, I sat down at the bench and tried my hand at making something, not just helping somebody else. And and that was it. I was hooked. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I knew. I didn't. I just wanted to do this. And mm -hmm. and um, they used to let us make whatever we want on our own time. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah. And and play around. So mm -hmm. I was always the one who was doing that. And I started visiting other people's studios, um, just to see what else was out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I visited Bob Birch down in Putney. Okay. And a very nice, welcoming man. Mm -hmm. And as I was leaving his studio, he said, hey, I'll rent you some time here if you want. And nice. I went there on like the next eight Saturdays, made some work and ended up selling it to galleries in Vermont and, wow. and just got started that way. Um, mm -hmm. And then a little while later, I left Simon Pierce. Mm -hmm. um, he told me I could have my job back if I wanted it. So that was nice. That is nice. Yeah. <laughs> that was very gracious. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah. And on from there, I just, you know, there really wasn't for me, there wasn't an idea that it would be a hobby. Mm -hmm. It's, it's such an expensive thing to do right? that I, you have to be, uh, funded <laughs> right. to have this as a hobby for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I had worked out a couple of designs already mm -hmm. on my own. Mm -hmm. And so I started those and I'm still making those designs. And that was 92. And wow. I started my business, so it's been 26 years. That's great. Congratulations. So, thank you. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah. You've been doing this for quite a while. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, how, you know, what what inspires you? What keeps you going? Where do you get, where do you get your ideas? <laughs> That's a terrible way to ask that question because it's like uh, the idea store. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the idea store, I just, you know. Don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess... My first answer would be function. Mm -hmm. um, like the hanging vases were about, well, beauty and function. Right. About um, something that, that is useful mm -hmm. and pretty at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I really like making drinking glasses. They're one mm -hmm. of my favorite things because you mm -hmm. can use them, covet them, wash them, mm -hmm. enjoy them. You know, yeah. they're so personal. Mm -hmm. Um and look at the light through them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, so I think it's, I think it's function. I think it's, uh, a lot of times it's a variation on something I've already done. Mm -hmm. And so I just take it a little, a little different move with it. Right. Sometimes it's an accident. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's something I've done on purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the best thing is, is that practice makes you better. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the first, the first hanging bases I made are pretty, pretty clunky but mm -hmm. now they're really refined you right, know so right. it's yeah. it, it's all about practice and and continuing mm -hmm. um you know and I, and I think it's also just influences of what I see what um what what I think people might want to have right as well because right. I do sell glass to make a living so I sure. need to make stuff that people like yeah <laughs> that and that I like to make I mean right. and and the, the truth is if I like it and if I believe in it and I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. Other people like it. Of course.
course. I think that's it really works. reflected in your work, whether you're yeah. a painter or yeah. a photographer or you make, you know, you weave stuff or whatever you do. Yeah. I, I think that's totally true. If you're passionate about it, then it, it gets reflected and it elevates your, mm. you know, the final product and all yeah. that. I mean, something like, like this, I was asking about inspiration because I just picked this glass up. I hadn't seen that form before oh. from you, but um, it reminds me of a piece of fruit or something. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, right, so I was right. Thinking like, oh, are you in the grocery store? Going, hmm, can I make that into glass? Yeah, I'm just always curious with where people are inspired. But I, I do like it. Janet, um, and we'll show some more close-ups of her work too. But she uses a lot of texture and a lot of, you know, 3D shapes. They're not, not necessarily just a cylinder or just a sphere. Um, there's dimples. There's, there's things sticking out. There's wibbly wobbly <laughs> stuff. There's stripes. So, you know, I really appreciate that about your work. Is that there's tactile. a lot of, a lot of texture going on, visual texture uh, mm. and tactile texture. Um, and you do commission work as well. I know, um, our friend Jennifer, who was on a, a previous episode of this okay. interview, you did, um, some light fixtures for mm -hmm. her. Um, so tell, talk a little bit about your commission work and how does that, how does that go, um, working with clients and, and do they ever ask you for stuff that you have never done before? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the commission stuff is mostly has come through my lighting mm -hmm. and making the lampshades. Mm -hmm. um, and so people, <clears throat> lighting is a very personal thing for somebody's home. Yeah. And, and they, they have a vision of what they want it to look like. And I really try to, to, to work with them to make that happen. Right. And, and oftentimes they'll, they'll see one of my, pieces say at the co-op or at a lighting store mm -hmm. um and and they'll come here and we work together to design what what they really like and what yeah. what's going to fit in their home mm -hmm. um and other than that I don't I guess I mostly do commission work of things that I already make okay I don't yeah I don't do a lot of things that are outside of that mm -hmm. I guess yeah, I guess that you makes know. sense because if people are starting from, oh, I really like that, but I'd like a green one or I'd like it a little bigger or mm -hmm. something, then it's a natural thing for them to say, okay, yeah, I can I can work with this. Mm -hmm. I just want a slightly customized version of it. Yeah, and and I want eight that look alike, right? Instead of just this one, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Sometimes people will come to me uh, with a picture of 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 uh, something they want me to make mm -hmm. and. Sometimes it's somebody else's work, and mm -hmm. and so that I steer away from yeah, as well. Understandable. <laughs> like, oh, you yeah, know, they're yeah. really good at that. Yeah, you should just buy it from them. You should have them make some more of those. For you. <laughs> That's yeah, right. That's really cool. Um, and Janet's also very. I, I, this is an aside from your work, but Janet's also very involved in our community. She sponsors a, a whole series of um, winter. Uh, shin shindigs they're called winter dances um, which are fun get people out of the house in the winter and yeah. do a bunch of other stuff too so I, I just think it's cool when people are are not only doing their artistic thing but also involved in the community um, what uh, do you have any like big projects coming up or like new designs you're working on or new ideas or big events I don't at this point, actually. Okay. It's um, the way I generally work the year mm -hmm. um, since, I guess, for about the last 10 years. So for the first 12 years, I rented other people's studios mm -hmm. and made work. And so I mostly sell my work to galleries that then sell it to people. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do some sales out of here. Mm -hmm. um, and so the way I've been working in the last 10 years or so is... I am always fired up in October, November, and December, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's in September, um, sometimes it's January on the other side of that, but mm -hmm. as far as actually making glass, I'm doing it then, right. and then and then I shut down, and I usually fire up again, like May, April, May, June-ish, March, mm -hmm. April, May, for another two or three months, so mm -hmm. I can be on, I could be on for as little as a month, or as long as four or five months. Right. Um, and it depends on orders and, and mm -hmm. um, what I feel like I need to make. So I, right. I fill orders, create a bunch of stock mm -hmm. of things that I sell regularly mm -hmm. and, and some extra stuff um, and then shut down. And right. so, so right now I'm in a, I'm in, I'm in the in-between period where 
I'm more processing the work that I've made. Right. Um, as well as selling it. Yeah. We're back to that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, and you sell and online it, too, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. I have a website Great. where I sell stuff online yeah. and I have a lot of individual pieces there, mm-hmm. which is good. People can buy like that exact piece. Right. Um, and, and that works out pretty well. Mostly my business has been built on galleries on mm-hmm. physical brick and mortar stores right people can go they pick it up they love it they you know right like that and it's available so. kind of regionally we'll link to um some of the places that you can find janet's work including including her website but also some of these local galleries if you're in the area and you can check it out um so speaking of your shop and everything, so um, when you when you say you're on, you're on. It's like you have to fire up your is it called a kiln furnace furnace yeah yeah um, to melt the glass and that stays on basically for the, through the duration yes and then you're working you know so you want to use because you're you know burning that propane you want to use that right and probably blow almost every day yeah I, I try I mean every day yeah. that I can There's, yeah. Uh, there's a pot of gla- pot inside that holds about 200 pounds mm-hmm. of molten glass. So, mm-hmm. it, and it takes a full day to empty it. Mm-hmm. I mean, to fill it, to mm-hmm. melt it, mm-hmm. and then it'll take me anywhere from a week to two weeks to empty it. Right. So there's always the day that mm-hmm. I'm charging, that I'm melting glass, um, and and in between there, it's it's sitting there at 2,000 degrees, waiting right. for me to work. Right. And, <laughs> I mean, it cost me money to not blow glass that day. So right. So I I do try yeah. to really be motivated and and push it, and mm-hmm. that's and that um. Yeah, that that's why it's good. Like I really love turning it on, mm-hmm. and I really like shutting it down too. Right. You know, yeah. it's nice because it really it. is such a driver, and it's hard to get other things done mm-hmm. when that yeah. thing is burning. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that completely so. makes sense. So, mm-hmm. and it's nice to, like you said, you can have these down periods where you're, you know, pricing things or working with clients or doing other stuff or doing your photography or doing your own hobbies or whatever. Right. It is. Well, and I have you the know, time off, and I have uh, two other businesses that I work on. Mm-hmm. One is the my business. It's a Vermont vinyl printing. So mm-hmm. I have a large format printer and I make mm-hmm. these decals that I then I had an idea for plus do other custom work for people. Right. Um, and and then my husband has a business that I work with him on. Right. So right. Um, because I, my furnace is off, I look less busy. Right. <laughs> so so I help him out. So yeah. So it's never a dull moment. No. You know? no. <laughs> well, that's a classic thing in Vermont, too, especially if you are self-employed is kind of like you don't just have one job. You have a couple of jobs. Yeah. And, you know, you rotate between them. You get bored with one thing or one thing yeah. runs out or it's the down period. You know, it's not time to make maple syrup. So we're going to go do something else. You know, right. Whatever it is, yeah. Right. That, that Glass blowing has always been my mainstay, though. Mm-hmm. Certainly, that's yeah. that's my living. Yeah. Well, I can understand. So. You're very talented, so mm-hmm. I love your creations. Um, <laughs> and people can come sort of seasonally when you're on. You do offer some sort of workshops or trials. People can come try it out, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll that has been so that. fun. Mm-hmm. So, so I always have done, uh, since I put my studio here in 2004, mm-hmm. I've done open studio days on the Saturdays between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm-hmm. And, um, two years ago, I started offering what I call lessons during mm-hmm. that time. And basically it's, I will help you make mm-hmm. a piece. Mm-hmm. And I mean, nobody could pick it up and just make something right. with verbal instruction. Right. You'd have to have my hands on it, you know, an experienced person's hands. And, sure. Yeah. And so together we work it and create their piece and get it in the oven. That's the guarantee is that your piece is going to make it in the oven and then yeah. you're going to have that right um and it's just been so much fun Mm -hmm. the reactions to it I mean it's some people are very nervous Mm -hmm. and 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 tense and other people are they they just know how to turn the pipe already you Mm -hmm. know it's it's just really neat Mm -hmm. but regardless everybody has loved it yeah and and it's been it's been a riot so I've mostly been doing that on those open studio days Mm -hmm. so that's that Saturdays between Thanksgiving and Christmas Mm -hmm. um but I do offer it at other times, especially if it's groups of right. people. I've had mm-hmm. families in. Oh, that's really just, cool. Yeah. It's yeah. a neat outing. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah I imagine. I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't want to try it on my own with, <laughs> without an experienced person. It's hot and dangerous and yeah. all that stuff. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I can sense, I can but... talk people through some of it, but mm-hmm. you, there's so much going on. And it's mm-hmm. so right now. It's so intense. I mean, it takes like 10 minutes. Right. It's not a lot of 
time span. You don't but have a lot of so wiggle intense. room in the process. Yeah. yeah. You just kind of have to do it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the guarantee is that it's going to get in the oven. So. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of the, the you know, adrenaline experience yeah. of crafting, right? The yeah. adrenaline experience of hand making. Is yeah. Like, <laughs> it's kind of dangerous, but it's a lot of fun. So here you go. Yeah, <laughs> That's and, great. We, and I think I've had two people drop theirs, but we did make them again. We yeah. did start oh, over. Oh, that's nice. So. That's nice. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you know. um, so yeah, that's that's been a lot of fun, and, mm-hmm. and otherwise, I'm 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 here a lot. You know, I work mm-hmm. here and live here, so yeah. um, so I am open by appointment. People mm-hmm. can call me up and come over, and I'm usually good at last minute. Yeah, uh, you know, good. if I'm here, and, excellent and stuff. So yeah, yeah. sure. That's great. Um, well, for those folks that don't live, you know, in New England, I would say within sort of driving distance, um, what would you recommend in terms of either? like getting started with glass blowing mm-hmm. or learning more about it are there are, is there a national guild for glass blowing are there there's professional a, associations that there's thing? A, play, a thing called the glass art society okay or gas yeah um and so i'm sure that would be a good resource um there's a wonderful school called mm-hmm. penland school of craft down in north carolina I yes some we've, time we've with, talked with a stained glass artist so fiber we, artist yeah. so, so we probably that's how they started okay with and, fiber arts yeah, yeah. And yeah. So we've linked yeah, to that before. I'll link to it again place. with these show notes. But yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and there are definitely, if you look it up online, there are other folks who are doing it, mm-hmm. who, who are offering um, classes or mm-hmm. lessons. I mean, mm-hmm. what I've been doing mostly is a, is a one of with people or, I mean, I've had people who come back and right. do it again, but it's it's the same sort of lesson I'm helping you make something. Right. And I, I've done a few classes as well, which is more about... Um, it's more my verbal instruction mm-hmm. than my hands on your piece. Mm-hmm. And, and so there really isn't the guarantee it's going to get in there, but it's going to be yours, you know, you, right. and, and, and so at least the classes are more for people who are interested in, in really learning the craft. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, and the, the physics and the, the, all that stuff behind yeah. how yeah. glass works when it's hot and all that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which really, I think comes more from your hands than sure. than your mind almost. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Especially after you've been doing it for this long. It, yeah, it, you know, I imagine there's a lot of muscle memory there. Yeah, and all that. So very cool. Mm. Good. Well, I encourage all of you to check out uh, more of Janet's work uh, online. Like I said, we'll we'll post um, some links to that. And if you're not in the area, definitely you know find a local glass blower near you. I know they're all over the country, so I'm sure there's someone where you could go again yeah. and take a tour and, and learn more about it. So. Yeah. I do have a, a list of the galleries that my work are, is mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. Uh, mostly uh, on my website. Okay, yeah, um, so we'll link to that. A few. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks again for joining me, Janet. Thank and you. Thank you all for joining us, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interviews with Vermont crafters. Cheers! Yay. <laughs>